bring Summer home, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord. Lord, we don't know where she's at, Father God, but you do, God, Lord. I still believe you can do miracles, Father God, Lord. Lord God, you can still pray for Candace, Father God, Lord. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. In this episode, we're going to examine this idea of does Candace deserve the benefit of the doubt? Does she deserve our sympathy? Now, watching the prayer vigil from Timmy Etherton's perspective, and I'll put a link to that in the description in case you haven't already, Candace once again appears somewhat like she did in the first interview she gave about two weeks after her daughter disappeared. Um, She appears mostly mute and inert and emotionally blank. Everyone else is praying audibly and feelings can be heard um, and clearly observed from other people there. Has Candace offered a prayer yet for her own daughter? We're beyond the six-week mark since Summer disappeared. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Hands off, Candace. Don't be so negative. Social media is evil. Let's just let law enforcement do their work and, and otherwise just pray, right? right? Um, well, is that the right approach? Does Candace deserve the benefit of the doubt? Should no one be holding her accountable kind of thing? No one who's interviewing her or praying with her, should she not be held accountable? And so we're going to address that in this episode. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Like, share, leave a comment. If you can't leave a comment, you can head to Twitter and leave a comment there under the hashtag Summer Wells. Okay, so, you know, I think it's important to, to address what we are talking about, the situation. So you can forget about that it's Candace. You could say it's a 39-year-old mother. And it's a five-year-old little girl that's missing. Should the mother be held accountable in some way? Now, we do know that it's not just the unexplained disappearance of Summer now. The Wells boys have also been taken into safe custody. And both parents have now appeared in juvenile court. In other words, all four of the Wells children aren't with their parents now. And Candace also had a younger sister disappear without a trace 12 long years ago. That's five people associated with Candace that have come into harm's way in some manner. Does Candace know anything that she's not telling us? So I want to draw your attention to a news article in the New York Daily News, right? This is a quote from the article. Six weeks after five-year-old Summer Wells went missing from her Tennessee home, police still have no answers. Now, though, the public has more questions after her brothers were removed from the home by Child Protective Services. Summer's mother, Candace Bly, told WJHL on Tuesday, that's just two days ago, um, that the three boys had all been taken into custody but refused to give any explanation. So when she's asked, you know, why were the boys taken into custody? No explanation. So six weeks later, the police have no answers, despite having repeatedly polygraphed Candace and Don and Grandma and taken their cell phones. Away from the prayer vigils, when Candace has been asked directly by reporters and by ex-detective Chris McDonough for details around the timeline on June 15th, the day Summer vanished, Candace has been obtuse at best and at worst reluctant to give details. Do you remember when she said, It's hard to keep track of the time when you're trying to have fun. Well, no doubt about that. But I wish they would come forward and explain themselves. And if you're not a suspect, at least come forward and say what you've seen. So what do you think? Does Candace deserve the benefit of the doubt? Well, we've been here before with missing persons cases. When Gannon Stork went missing for over a month, did his stepmother, Letitia Stork, deserve the benefit of the doubt. Suzanne Morphew's disappearance dragged on for a year. Did Barry deserve the benefit of the doubt? In the Lori Vallow case, the kids vanished without a trace, and yet their mother went on honeymoon to Hawaii, not believing she owed anyone an explanation. In that case, some people also relied on faith that it would all turn out fine by some miracle. 
Months after they disappeared, the remains of Laurie's children were later dug up on her fifth husband's property. He was a lay preacher, Chad Day Bell. They now accuse and will stand trial on multiple conspiracy to commit murder charges, amongst others. So what about Candace? Does she deserve special treatment because she's a Christian? And as a poor individual, she's vulnerable, and so special treatment. Ought we actually to have sympathy for her instead? Watching the last vigil, I noticed Robin Lane handing out flyers right in front of Candace, while Candace stood by, hands in her pockets. As far as I could see, Candace herself didn't take any flyers and wasn't going to hand any out. In terms of the church community at these vigils, would it be so hard to prompt or prod Candace and say, Come on, Candace, you her mom. Do you have a few words for your little girl? Or to ask her what's in her heart and to offer a prayer for those searching uh, for summer. And what about a prayer for her sons too? Is prayer sufficient in a situation like this? To pray silently and hope? Or is prayer allied with action better? Do I have this straight? So I'm just asking all the Christians in the house, um, God forgives when the sinner repents. Is that correct? If, if the sinner repents genuinely, then, then God forgives. Is that right? And I don't think any of us are completely good. So I don't know that it's asking too much for Candace to acknowledge some of her past mistakes. If she can spend over an hour talking quite convincingly and emphatically on camera with Chris McDonough, why can't she say a prayer for summer? Shouldn't she perhaps be asked to do so? She can say no, but she can also maybe do something. What do you guys think? Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.